Okie doke. Well, so um, we are talking um, uh, applications of integration. Now, really, you know, in in this uh, chapter, um, yeah, there are applications, but I, I think the important thing to consider is is how we're making them. Okay, how do you how do you build integrals? And and so I'll try to you know point that out as we go. Um, and and again, uh, so I've mentioned this already, but um, pretty much you know when we want to model things, um, uh, we want to model them as you know, something involving x and then times a delta x, and we want to do that for lots of little pieces that we're going to add up. And if we can, if we can model it this way, and, and what we want to do in the end is add up all of those little pieces that look like that, oh, probably an integral is going to work. Okay, as long as we can do the integral and, and all that. So, you know, that's, that's this whole idea of modeling with integration is we're just, we're going to cut the problem up into little tiny pieces and, and then ask, well, you know, can we model each of those pieces that way? And if we can, hey, we're good. And that X, of course, is generic in that you know, as we look at some of these things, sometimes we want to use y, the y-axis, and, and do things relative to that. Um, uh, or, you know, some other variable. So, before I start, any questions on anything? Yes? Um, would you explain how to do exercise 11 of section 7.2? Exercise 11? Yes. Oh, yeah, kind of... Um, yeah, yeah. So I just this morning was able to put um, exercise 12 on there, and um, and I'll tell you that that's a long one. I mean, you know, so these exercises are really four exercises in one in exercise 11, and um, and I don't remember. I think. Uh, I had various problems as I did them, okay? So uh, I mentioned a little bit of that on Blackboard where I posted it. Um, but uh, uh, I did, I had a few problems. Like one right off, I think it was when I did 12A, um, I had, I don't remember the numbers exactly, but they were something like 32 and 16, and I was supposed to add them, and I subtracted them. You know, what can I say? Not good with numbers. So, um, uh, you know, so I had some things like that. Then I did, for 12C, I actually did the statement in 11C, the line x equals 3. And, um, and so then I left that in there. You know, I didn't redo anything. I just left it in there and then um, also did the right one. C. So, okay. Uh, but this, actually, 11 is a great exercise to just introduce and look at section 7.2. So I won't go through the whole thing, um, but we'll talk about it. And, uh, and so in exercise 11 of 7.2, because that's 7.2 is where I wanted to start. Uh, so exercise 11. Uh, what we're told is we have uh, y equal to the square root of x, um, y equals 0, and x equals 3 uh, bound a region. Okay, so the big part of a lot of these is just make sure you get the region right. Now, with technologies like Desmos and so forth, 
you have a lot fewer excuses to screw that up. Now, I can screw it up because when I do these things, I don't usually do it on Desmos to, to show you. I start talking about it and I do it. So, hey, I got all kinds of excuses to screw it up. You don't really have a reason to screw it up other than typing it in wrong to Desmos, which I have done that, um, definitely. So, um, as we look at that, you know, so y equals the square root of x does something along those lines. And uh, y equals 0 is just the x-axis. And then here at uh, x equals 3 uh, is the vertical line. And so we're talking about a region that looks like this kind of wedge here. And then in parts uh, a, b, c, and d, uh, what they'd like us to do is come up with a volume uh, from uh, rotating this thing uh, in part A. Uh, they want it rotated around the x-axis. Okay. Now, in this particular... Um, section, section 7.2, what they do is they talk about this disk method. Yeah, actually it's a great idea. Right? Is, um, I don't know how to do this problem. Right? I mean, not in the sense of, I don't have a formula for it, something like that. You know, I don't, I don't have prior knowledge that I just kind of look at this and say, oh yeah, okay, that's the square root of x. Um, you know, this is maybe a height of 3 this way, or uh, I guess that would be the square root of 3. You know, I could say, oh, I've got the, a base of 3, a height of square root of 3, and everybody knows the answer is. No, I have no idea. Right? I, I don't know what it is. And so, um, what I have to do is work on stuff I do know. Well, if I rotate this around the, the x-axis, right, what happens is if, and this is where you have to start kind of use, using some visualization power of your brain. Um, uh, it helps a lot. I wish I still had, when I was growing up, I had this nifty, um, well, I, my parents had this nifty uh, Thanksgiving decoration. I think it was Thanksgiving. It was a pumpkin, so I guess it could have been a Halloween thing, but it was a Thanksgiving decoration, and it collapsed, and when it was collapsed, it looked something like that, actually more of a half circle, and then you just grab it and it had the fan folds in between, and you, you just open it up and, ah, there's a pumpkin. Yeah, that's all we're doing here is you could think of this uh, being uh, two sheets uh, of cardboard or something put together, and now I'm going to just open them up, and they're going to be attached so that when I open them up, um, if I turn it on its side, you know, I'm going to end up with something that looks like, you know, um, I'm rotating it this way, so it looks like it might be slightly pointed on top. This is the top at this point. And, you know, this would be a height of 3. And this radius in here would be, um, uh, from here to here, would be the square root of 3. Okay, and, and so it's like the top of a silo. We're in an agricultural area, right? It's sort of like the top of a silo, uh, something like that. And, and so we need to visualize that, um, but uh, a way we can uh, get at this by making it, turning it into a problem I do know how to do is I can come in here and I can just cut it a bunch of times. And when I make a cut across there, just slicing it horizontally here, um, as I look at that cut, It's just going to look like a very short cylinder, a disk. 
Okay, so when I make that cut, I'm, I'm going to get something that looks a lot like that. I know how to do that problem, right? If this is H and that's um, some R, some radius R, then I know the volume of this is just pi R squared times H. That I know how to do. And the idea here is that um, each and every single one of these is like that. And so I need to add up a whole bunch of these things. Oh, so that's looking good. That's looking a lot like this idea. You know, I need to model it as something. Now, I need a function and then a delta x uh, or a dx. Um, I don't know that I have that yet, but I think I do. And part of what tips me off on such things is um, typically I, you know, if this thing's really small and I can make a better approximation by making it smaller, that height, um, and getting a better and better approximation by making it smaller and smaller, that's probably my delta x. Okay, and often in these, when we do a disk method, I would expect the height to be the delta x. Okay, um, because it's to make a disk, I'm slicing these heights as I go. So, so I'll make those heights smaller and smaller and smaller. That sounds like my delta x. Okay. So here, I need to sort of translate what I'm thinking here into this picture. And so if I rotate around the x-axis, right, to, to think of the picture I made, I sort of tipped it up on n. And those slices are perpendicular to my axis of rotation. Okay, so I'm doing this. I'm slicing it up this way perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Very important. You know, I mean, it's a, a good thing to remember is if I'm trying to do a disk method and um, uh, I want to, um, rote, you know, so I've rotated something and I want to do a disk method, those disks are going to be sliced in such a way that it's perpendicular to my axis of rotation. Otherwise, I don't have a disk. I've got some other shape. Okay, so, so um, I haven't written that down here anywhere. Uh, I don't really want to erase that. We, I'm not. Well, yeah, we can we can erase this. Um, you know, so this section introduces this disk method method, and. Um, so I want to uh, rotate that thing around there. Um, now I take each disk, and so I need, I need to identify my height and my radius. Well, my height, again, I'm slicing it up this way. So my height is my dx or delta x. And then I need my radius of this thing, but oh, there's my radius right from here to here, there's my radius, and that's just my y value of the square root of x. So for any given x value, my function of x here, I get the square root of x. And so what I want to do is sum up uh, a whole bunch of these things that look like um, pi r squared. So I said r was the square root of x. I need to square that and then times my dx or delta x. Actually, it doesn't really matter whether I call it d or delta. Um, and, well, that's, I need to do that for each and every piece. So each and every piece looks like this. I'm going to sum up that, you know, i equals 1 to n, and I'm going to let that go to infinity, uh, that n go to infinity, that delta x go to 0. I get an integral. Now, 
it's also important to know, well, what's, what are the bounds on that integral? I'm making those slices from 0 to 3. And so for part A, uh, I end up needing an integral from 0 to 3 of pi r squared. So um, that's just uh, x at that point and dx. And I evaluate that thing, I got it, I'm done. Okay, so there I did the actual A, um, and I will do the actual B here, uh, because uh, those aren't such a big deal. Uh, I think it's the B, yeah. So now, in B, they've got the same thing, right? We have this same region, but now I'm going to rotate it around this way. And now, um, actually, they call it the washer method. If I have a disk with a hole in it, yeah, we usually call that a washer. Um, because when I rotate this around, and if I take a given slice out of it, right, that given slice, it will be a, a disk that big around, but it's going to have a hole in the middle. Okay, questions on that? Because actually that, I mean, the integrals at this point, um, you might want to rethink your future if you're still having great difficulty with that. Okay? Um, not that you can't mess it up. You know, I mean, you can know what you're doing and still screw it up. I do it all the time. I think I know what I'm doing anyway. Okay? But, um, you know, if something like that scares you, yeah, at, at this point in the course, probably you want to, you want to rethink things a little bit. Um, so the hard part here, the big thing, is trying to come up with that, right? Coming, coming up with what the heck is the radius and, you know, what's the dx or, you know, how am I slicing it up? I have to think about it and, and what I get. But here, you see, I get an outside part and I get this inside part. Well, once again, I don't know the answer to that, except I do, right? I mean, if it's just this disk, just this washer, okay, there's an uppercase R, there's a lowercase R, and I know the area of this thing is just going to be a pi times my uppercase R squared minus my lowercase R squared. That's the area that I'm looking at. Now, you know, where did that come from? Well, I just took the big area, pi r squared, and then subtracted the little area, pi little r squared. Yeah, I just took the big area, uh, subtract out the little area, there I've got it. Now, to get the volume, well, again, it's, it's uh, the same thickness, or, you know, it's... Yeah, it's the same thickness all the way around and so forth. Oh, so to get my volume, toss an H on the end. And there we go. So in this case, uh, and, and this is where you don't want to get too hung up on the, the formulas themselves. I mean, you know, what you want to know is that the area of a circle is pi r squared. And I think most of you know that. If not, well, I, I actually expect all of you know that, but, um, right, pi r squared. So, you know, that's what you really have to remember. The rest is the modeling trying to think about and visualizing what the heck I have here. And so, as I look at this, you know, what I kind of picture, and I don't know that I can draw it really well, um, but I picture sort of 
it would be a funny way for the candle to do it, but I kind of picture a candle, right, that I've been burning. And so if you sort of slice this thing down the middle, slice the candle down the middle, if I've been burning it, it would look something like this. Now, uh, this goes all the way down, so I guess I really need to, you know, have it come all the way down. So that candle's about ready to fall apart. It needs a new wick or something. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, you know, and I think most of us have seen a kind of a big can a candle that's kind of big around. And it gets, it dips down in the middle. You know, so that's kind of what's going on. Well, in that way, I can tell you the volume of the brand new candle. Right? I can tell you the volume. Pretend we had all of this, this whole rectangle. That's easy. Now, I can do it with an integral and so forth. But I know, I mean, if I can do the disk method, I can do a candle. Okay? Because it's just the whole height. Right, you know, so, so I can get that outside volume. This part, I can actually do without doing an integral. Okay, now the inside part though, oh yeah, everything's changing in there. And so, yeah, I need an integral. So what I'm going to do to get this volume and, and again, you could, you could use both integrals. We can write it that way. But, um, but what I would do is to get my whole volume, I would take the big volume uh, of sort of the whole candle here, right? V1, the outside. And I'm going to subtract some V0, the inside. Now, you can think of that as just the difference of the two radii, and you do all, everything all in one integral, or you can think of it as sort of two separate volume problems. The volume of the big cylinder, and then the volume of this burned out region inside the candle, what's, what's gone. And either way is fine. Okay, so what we need to do though to do that is, yeah, it's, we're, gonna, we're rotating around the y-axis, so I'm gonna, to make a disc or a washer, I need to um, slice perpendicular to that axis. Now, I know that that is a distance of three. So I know my big R, you know, here, this is just pi uh, three squared and then um, times the height. Well, remember that was square root of three. So square root of three. Like I said, I don't need an integral to do that. I know that answer. Okay, but the inside is I do that um, here, with that inside part, well, here's the problem. This is y equals the square root of x. I need to know the x value for a given y, right? Because I'm slicing like this. I'm going to tell you, here I am at y sub i. What's the radius there? Oh, it needs to be in terms of y. And so I just need to solve for x and get x equal y squared. And now what you've kind of done is just turn the problem on its side. Um, we don't usually redraw everything that way. And so we're, sometimes uh, I have been known to do that with much more complex situations where I kind of did all this, but I truly just drew it on its side to help me understand what was going on. Uh, but, you know, something like this, yeah, I think I can, I can handle that. Uh, so we've got our, our little r equals y squared uh, in there. And 
And so as I do this, um, my inside part, uh, so V0 here, uh, I have an, an integral from, uh, I'm slicing up the y-axis, so that goes from 0 to the square root of 3. I need my pi r squared, so here's pi, and my, uh, I said the um, radius inside was y squared, so I need y squared squared, and then times the height, but that's just my dy. Okay, so that's what I need to do for that one. Uh, and subtract the two. Now, the way the, the book would tell you to do this is um, they would say uh, um, do, do this idea of the big radius minus the, the little one. And um, sure, right? I can, I can do that for any one of these. I, I could look here and I could say, oh, well, what's that distance, right? From here to here is the square, uh, is, sorry, is the y squared. Uh, what's that distance? Oh, well, that's 3 minus y squared. Okay, so um, I would have, in that case, uh, from what they tell me to do, um, uh, I need to take my, um, oh, well, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I know that distance is 3 minus uh, y squared, but I don't want to write it that I want to take that radius. I don't want to take 3 minus y squared and square that. I want to take that radius and square it minus that radius. And, and so, you know, if I do it their way, it's pi, and I would have my 3 squared minus my uh, y squared squared, okay, and then times a dy, and I would still do that from 0 to the square root of 3. Okay, well, how would you do that integral? In essence, you'd do it as two integrals. All right, I mean, in, as far as the antiderivatives, I would take the antiderivative of the pi 3 squared, with pi, 9 times pi, and I would take the antiderivative y to the fourth with that negative and pi and all that. Um, so I would do that, and here I would just get a y. And when I put in zero, nothing happens. I mean, I just get zero. When I put in the square root of three, I'll get the square root of three, and that will give me pi three squared square root of three for that, that piece here. And then I'll subtract pi, you know, the integral of pi y to the fourth dy. So it's, it's the same thing. I mean, it gives you that same answer. And um, that's, that's what we're doing. But see, what we're trying to do is build things up one piece at a time, one little piece. And so now, you know, in C and D, they say, uh, okay, rotate about these various lines. And um, I kind of feel like in 11, they might have had a typo in that both lines are x equals. And I just picture that one of them, should, they wanted a y equals line. And uh, um, let's look at that. So I'm not going to do C or D. Uh, and notice, you know, these are taking a while. I mean, these take a long time, uh, especially if I'm talking about it while I'm doing it and, and so forth. But, you know, just to think through them and, and all that, it, it takes a while. So here's uh, an 11 uh, uh, sort of hat here. And uh, we still have the same region, square root of x. Uh, there's 3. Uh, we, so we've got that, square root of 3. And suppose I want to rotate this about the line uh, y equals 2. So I want to send this thing 
around that line. Well, if I'm going to use this disc or washer method, um, what I'm going to want to do is um, think about slices like this, and I'm going to take that slice, send it around that way. And so I need this full radius here. So there's my big R. And then what I'm taking away out of the middle is that little R in there. And so I just need to describe each of those. Because again, once I know those, I know the answer because I've split it up this way. Right? I, I've cut it this way. I know that my answer, the way I modeled this, is the integral from 0 to 3. Uh, I'll put a pi out there in front. I've got my big R squared minus my little r squared dx. So it's really, it's a matter of, you know, do I know those, those different radii? Okay, well that one I know is 2. At every single spot that I look at, that distance is 2. Every single time. So I know that my um, r squared is 2, or sorry, big R squared is 2 squared. And then minus, now here is where I do need to do a subtraction. Because you see, this height is the square root of x. But I need that radius there that I'm rotating. Right? Because again, I'm, I'm sort of making something that if I cut it through the middle, um, looks kind of like this, right? And it's, it's connected around so it's a, it's a big stadium, right? Big round stadium is what I'm making here. Uh, if I rotate, yeah. So yeah, I'm rotating it around this way. So here is the hole in the stadium. So this goes right there, okay? And then the edges go up. And so you can think of a great big round uh, coliseum type stadium, something like that. And so I'm, I'm going to get the, the volume of the whole thing, uh, the whole cylinder, and then subtract out of that all the air space. And that will give me um, the volume of the seating area. Is that making sense? Questions on that? Okay. Again, this is, this is the tricky stuff, is, is trying to come up with that. Um, now, again, as, as I did integrals and did stuff on video, oh yeah, you know, I did stuff like whatever, 13 plus 16, or 32 plus 16 is 16, right? I did a subtraction. Um, so, yeah, you can mess it up, but it's not tricky. Okay, this is, can be tricky, kind of coming up with these things. So here, as I look at what's that distance, well, you see it's 2 minus the square root of x is that distance. So I have 2 minus the square root of x squared and then my dx. And so... Now, what's, what's nice is if I square this out this way. So uh, the way I did it before, uh, you wouldn't get that cancellation in the uh, integral. But notice here, um, by doing it as an integral, doing the, the big cylinder as part of my integral, uh, I've got the 2 squared here. When I square this out, I'll get a minus 2 squared. Those will just go away, and I'll just get the rest of whatever that is. So... Um, you know, I, there are advantages both, both ways. Okay, but this is the disk method. This is what we're trying to do, is just model with a disk. 
Now, so from that, uh, what we want to do is talk about 7.3. We want to do the same application. We still want to find volumes. And we'll still use this curve, square root of x. Okay? But in 7.3, we go to this thing called the shell method. And so to contrast it with the disk method, okay, the disk method, right, we, we were just trying to make little solid cylinders. Okay, that's what we wanted to make. In the shell method, what we're trying to make, um, and uh, the best way I tend to think of it, I guess, uh, we're trying to make soup cans. Okay, you go buy some soup. You open the lid. You open the top. Now, cut out the bottom as well. So it's just the sides of a soup can. But that's what we're trying to make. We're trying to make a bunch of soup cans that go together. Uh, what, let's see, what are the, there's a name for the little Russian dolls, right? One stacks inside the other. So, you know, you picture that, or now um, we, in our kitchen, our measuring cups, they all sort of sit in one another really nicely, okay? And, and it's that kind of picture is um, cut out the bottoms of all of those. Don't really do it. It won't measure very well. But, um, you know, you cut out the bottoms of those, and that's what you picture you're doing is you're just then asking, Okay, for this particular measuring cup, how much volume was needed to make it? Okay, and when you picture that soup can, so you have something that kind of looks like this, except we're, we're also adding in a thickness. Okay, so it's, it's, it has some sort of thickness to it. I mean, to make a soup can or a beverage can, you need some material, okay, because it has a thickness. And um, so we want to remember that part, but that's also the part we're going to make those cans thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. That is probably our DX, okay? But this other stuff, right, so as I look at this, if that's a radius R and this is a height H, what we can do is where I've drawn that radius line, I can cut the soup can. And when I do, it turns into that. I can flatten it. And this is still H. And this distance here is 2 pi r. Okay, because it's just the circumference of the circle around the can. And so, the only thing I need now, here's an area. The only thing I need now is a thickness, right? And, and I'll, just, I'll just keep trying to make that thickness, um, you know, some W there. Uh, I'll just try to make that smaller and smaller and smaller. That's going to be my DX in these. And in this case, when we um, get our volume, I forgot to write volume here, right? The volume of this thing then is our 2 pi r times our h and then times that w, okay? And that is most likely going to be a dx or a dy. This radius often, now it doesn't have to be, but it's probably going to be something like x or uh, a value minus x, you know, like 6 minus x or something like that, or 6 plus x or uh, something along those lines. Quit throwing things. 
And, uh, um, and then h will often be some function that we are modeling with, you know, using that to get our shape often. You know, again, it, it can change, but let's take a look at Uh, oops, that was the wrong thing. It was the square root of x. Here's 3. Um, here's square root of x. So square root of 3, like that. And now, let's say I want to rotate this around the y-axis. Okay, in this case, if I use the shell method, the idea is, now notice the difference in modeling, is, okay, I'm going to rotate around this way. To make my soup cans then, I actually slice parallel to my axis of rotation. See, so I'm going to slice like this to make those soup cans. Okay, disk method, I sliced perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Shell method, I sliced parallel to the axis of rotation. Now, then once I do that, I can look at this. Here's a given can. Well, I need to know that radius. Okay, I need that radius. I need this height. And if I have those two things for the soup can, I can get its, its each and every piece of that soup can, add them all up between 0 and 3, and I'm good to go. So we have our 0 to 3, and each soup can is 2 pi r h times our width. Now, again, the width, oh, that's the thing that's shrinking. That's our delta x, or dx. So I need 2 pi times my radius r, ah, okay, again, I do need that, um, uh, oh, sorry, never mind, um, what, right, what's the radius? It's the x value at which I'm at, right, there's the radius, it's a little misleading when I drew it up there, but um, there's the radius, it's just wherever I am on the x-axis when I sliced it. So that's holding to form that often that's R or something, uh, sorry, X or something really related to it. Um, and, and so uh, we get uh, X for that. And then my height, oh, that's just the square root of X. So I've got my 2 pi R times my height and then DX. And there we go. Um, I've got x to the 3 halves. I can do this antiderivative. Not a problem. Okay? And, and so that is this idea of the shell method. Okay? Now, what all these have in common, and um, uh, uh, some other methods in 7.2 mention when they talk about the manufacturing and so forth, is that really every single time um, what they're getting is essentially uh, we are adding up uh, base area times height. Right? Because that's really, even though we're talking about this can, right, to think about the volume, we turned it into this base area of this rectangle times the height. A disk, we took the area of a circle times the height. Or we took the, you know, with the washer, we took the area of a circle minus the um, area of another circle and then times the height. Okay, so these are all base areas. And, and so uh, they do in 7.2 and 7.3 give you a, well, I'm not sure about 7.3. Um, but definitely 7.2, they, 
they give you some problems where it's no longer a disk, right? Or you could say, well, it is a disk. It's not a round disk. It's a square disk or a triangular disk or something like that. Okay, it's still just a disk, though, if, if you want to think of it in very general terms. It's a base area times a height. And even here, when we made these soup cans, well, cut the soup can to try to figure out its volume. It's a base area times a height. And so every time on these volumes, that's pretty much what we're doing, is just trying to reduce it to a base area times a height. Okay. Now, we have just a couple minutes left. Uh, since you do have homework due Monday night on 7.4, I thought I'd at least try to mention 7.4 today. Um, in 7.4, they talk about arc length. And I'll just kind of introduce the idea. Uh, but again, all we're trying to do is we're going to break the problem into little pieces that we know the answer to it, and hopefully those pieces look a lot like a function of x times dx. And so here's x, here's y. I have some curve f of x, and I would like to know how far is it from here to there. Hard problem. I don't know the answer. Okay, but what I do know how to do is, um, and I, I, you know, something in the back of my mind tells me um, I might have mentioned this at one point. Uh, what I like to do the first day of a calculus class, but is kind of frowned on at this point because we don't like to pass around materials and things like that, is. I like to give people a wound up piece of spaghetti, dried spaghetti, and a ruler, and ask you to measure the piece of spaghetti. And most, and I usually you know, do it in groups, most groups end up breaking the spaghetti into little tiny pieces and measuring the pieces. Exactly. That's what we want to do. Um, and, and it is that physical. Right? I mean, you can, I'm just going to break this into a bunch of pieces. And each of those pieces looks kind of like a straight line. And I know how to do a straight line. So blow it up. Um, uh, we'll put it over here. So blow it up really big. And I'm looking at something that looks like that. And here is, you know, say x1, f at x1. And here is x2, f at x2. And the distance from here to here, well, if it were a straight line, right, there's a change in x, change in y. The distance here, my distance is... Uh, the square root of the change in x plus the change in y. There you go. One piece, just like that. Unfortunately, ah, not really quite what I'm looking for. Really close. I mean, it's, at least it's got a delta x, but it's also got this delta y and all that. Okay, here's the fun part. Just factor out the delta x out of this thing. Okay, what happens when you do that? Well, delta x squared, actually. Factor that out. I get a 1 there, obviously, because I took it out. Plus, now here, in order to factor out a delta x squared out of the top, I need to kind of toss in there you know, a delta x squared over a delta x squared, right? So what I'm left with here is delta y squared over delta x squared. 
Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, Pythagorean theorem for a straight line. And so I've got that, but now I factored it out. So I've got the square root of delta x squared. Oh, that's just times delta x. And there we have it. We can do this. Now, why can we do this? Well, okay, well, I've got my delta xi, each piece. Here, well, uh, this looks like a function of f, right? Function of, f, you know, function f of x. Um, and squared, eh, that's okay. Uh, it's just a new function of, of x. Uh, but I'm dividing by that. But remember, we're going to let delta x go to zero. Delta y over delta x, delta x goes to zero. That's the derivative in there. That's f prime. That's a perfectly good function of x. I mean, this is a generic f. It doesn't have to be that f, right? It's a generic function of f. It, and so when you, when you do this with um, uh, arc length, you end up with the derivative function in here squared. But those are your pieces. You, each piece is just the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared and then times delta x. We can add those up with an integral. And there you go. Now, <laughs> generally speaking, this integral 1 plus something squared like this involving x, you aren't going to be able to do it. Now, a lot of the book problems, they give you very, very special cases that you can do it. You can do the antiderivative. Uh, but we've got decimals, right? If I can set it up, I can do it, okay? So we'll talk more about that on Monday. Uh, but that is uh, in the 7.4 and arc length. But it's always just the same idea. Each piece, I'm trying to make some function of x times a little delta x. And if I can do it, I can probably turn it into an integral. Get up. See you on Monday.